All right, so we're going to go sharpen this thing and protect it, and then we'll put the handle on it. All right, been sharpening our knife. Got her pretty sharp, I think. And you can cut bluer. When you know you got it sharp all the way down, when you can start heel to toe, they call it. Go all the way down to the front of the knife. And could we get it sharper? Probably could. We had lots of time. But for a good serviceable knife that we can sharpen in the field, this is this is plenty. Uh, this will easily skin a deer or uh, scale fish. Process your your uh, wood. Do carving. This is plenty sharp. What I've done is I've used two stones today and uh, just an old belt. Um, Try and set this up so you don't have to go buy a bunch of stuff. Now this is an old belt. I wore this for very many years. This is uh, kind of a cheapy belt. If you could get a belt that had the, or take this one apart and get to where you can f get to the back of the leather, you can strap on the back of the leather first. It's a little rougher. And then the front, uh, the finished side is smoothest but uh, either way uh, this worked and uh, we sharpened it with a file first just a little bit got down to where it was feeling like it had an edge on it then we done it with two two different stones two different grits um, and uh, oil stones rather and you can use lots of stuff you can get on uh, tons of ways to sharpen a knife um, which direction to pull it, which direction not to pull it. If you've got access to a belt sander, you can get all the different belts and you can sharpen it pretty much right on that um, and hardly use a stone. But uh, we're trying to set this up so that, that uh, you don't have to buy so much stuff. If you've got a knife at all, you, you've got some kind of sharpening stone. If you find yourself with no stone at all, you can use sandpaper. You can use the sandpaper that's in this kit if you know to do that if you don't have a stone cut you a couple of little strips about an inch wide of each one of the different grits of sandpaper and glue that uh, um, to a board or either glue it or you can wrap around the end and tape it um, and you can use that as a as a, basically a uh, whetstone um, sharpening stone each grit go up each grit and, and it'll work fine and then get your old belt and, and uh, drop it with you with other belt. Um, if you buy the buy our sheath making kit it'll come with enough leather um, to make the sheath and then most of them, I mean I, I try to do this for everybody, give you another piece of leather that you could use for a strop um, as well and so you can you can certainly get two items out of that. Um, when you do your stropping you would like to use Jeweler's Rouge. I did not today. Um, didn't didn't do that because that's another expense that you'd have to buy. You don't have to have that, um, but it does help. Uh, you can get that at a cheap tool store, um, that kind of place, um, or you can get it online. But we left our some of our uh, tempering colors on here. This will be where the handle is. This will get covered up, um, but we've got it pretty clean. And as we sharpened it, we tried to pay close attention and not scratch it up too much. Again, this is going to be a, a knife that I'm going to use. I mean, hopefully that's what's going to happen with the knives that y'all make. Either you're going to use them or you're going to give them to somebody that's, that will use them. A knife that sits in a cabinet is nice, but if you never use it, it's, it's kind of defeats the purpose. Um, and this is a knife that you're going to make yourself out of the kit. It didn't cost your arm and a leg. It's going to be a very nice knife. You can put tons more time into sharpening it. You can put tons more time into polishing it uh, if you choose to. But I'm just going through the basics. Um, so next we're going, to, we're going to protect this blade with some tape and some paper. And then we're going to figure out our holes for our handle. And then I'm going to show you how to fix the handle. Got our knife all taped up. Safety first. Um, we're going to get our safety glasses. Make sure when you're using power equipment, particularly, use them. Always a good idea. And then we're going to attach our blade here 
to our handle. Now we've got a lot more material here than we actually need. We're going to pick out the smoothest looking side to put it on and we're going to pay attention to that tape that it's not in our way. Um, and we're going to drill one hole in this and it'll save you a lot of sanding and filing if you get it fairly close to the other side. I've got double stick tape into our kit to help you um, stick this together if you need to. Um, most of the time I don't use it but I did put it in there for you guys. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill one hole and then I'm going to put one of my rivets in it to hold it and then I'm going to drill the other hole. Now be very careful with drill press. I've got a drill press. If you could do this with a hand drill, um, and I, if I was going to do it with a hand drill, I'd put it in my vise and drill it. And you got to make sure that you're, you're level both up and down and sideways when you're doing that. Okay, get you back in the picture here. When if you're going to drill this by hand, make sure that you look both directions. You know, sometimes you look just straight and looks fine, but it's leaning off this way. So check that out. And there's my original handle that I showed y'all. I will use that one with the white on it. I think I like that. So we're going to put this on here, up here. Let's do the white towards the front. Yeah, towards the front. Okay. What we're doing right now is we're just placing the holes. We want to make sure that our our um our we're just drilling the hole. Um, we're gonna place a rivet in that to hold that spot. And we'll set up and drill the next, the next hole. When you're doing your rivets, there's two kinds of rivets, two sides, I guess. One side is a little fatter than the other. Use the fat side to pick out your drill bits. It looks like, looks like that. Use the fat side to pick out your drill bits and to use that as a placeholder. So we'll put that down in there. And then we're going to come here. We're checking to make sure that our blank is all on our block of wood at this point. We can't have it um, sticking off anymore. We're going to go up and down with our drill so we drill a good clean hole. Good idea at this time. Get your other rivet out and check to make sure that you've got that you've got that holes aligned so that the rivets fit in it. Otherwise, wasting your time. And we're getting the fat rivet again, the fattest one. And we're gonna put it down in there. And so that's what we've got right here. Get you in the camera right there got that um, got your rivets in there and it may my drill bits just a shade bigger than probably need to be and it may wiggle just a little bit but when we dry those rivets together we will actually um, be pushing them and they'll swell a little bit and we're also going to use epoxy on this I did not include epoxy with the kit because you don't have to have it but uh, on all my knives I epoxy them we're going to actually insert our knife into here. So we need to know we've got to split this block of wood. And we can uh, we can do that several ways. Um, if you got good straight grain walnut, you can actually split it. Um, and this one looks pretty straight grain. Uh, to be a little safer, since you only have one piece of walnut, um, if you had several, you could certainly split one. Um, to be a little safer, we can cut it with a hacksaw or a handsaw or a bandsaw. Um, bandsaw is the easiest, but I'll cut this one with a hacksaw, so I'm going to set it up and show you that. All right, we got our block of wood. I have put a um, 
hand screw or block clamp into my vise. You could use the vise itself, but uh, I like doing it this way. This this holds my wood and doesn't mar it up. Uh, our blacksmith vise uh, will mar it up, and we've been having oil and stuff on it, so we want to prevent prevent getting oil all over our block of wood. And uh, hands probably need washing too. But uh, what we're going to do now is, of course, the direction that we want to cut this is in half. So I'm going to show you. See if I can get you there right and see. I'm going to show you what I do for that. I get my this finger and hold it as on the edge of the block of wood, and then take my pen where I think is the middle, and I just. And you can do this with a pencil. And then we're going to switch it around and we'll do the other side too. And I want to write on that side. But you can see it's got that, and it's pretty much the center. Uh, pretty much. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point. We send your blocks of wood out with the sides already flat. If they're not already flat when you get it, flatten it. Uh, use your file, just flatten it perfectly flat. We we try to send them out with them perfectly flat off of the table saw, but sometimes uh, a chip or something will be on it. But that's all right. You got plenty of material. Flatten it out. We're gonna draw this line. We're gonna put it in our our uh, block clamp over here. This is slower than a hand saw for sure, but it's walnut. We've got a little bit of tiny place to do. This should take but just a second. I'll bring you right back when we get done. Alright, we cut our piece of in half, and the outside looks rough, and that's fine because that's going to be the outside, and we're going to sand on that. We're going to turn this thing over. You would like to make your, your piece a mirror image if you can, which means you turn it over like that. And when we put our rivets back in there, we'll, uh, we'll see how it looks. Now, a rivet's probably going to be too long at this point, uh, or too short, rather, to, to go all the way through, but we'll check it. All right, we've got our handle here. Uh, put a rivet in it. It's barely sticking through our handle, like I said. And once you get it to, we got one on the other side too. That's thick enough or too thick. In my case, it's still way too thick. Um, gives you some idea of how you're going to, you know, treat the ends. At this point, you can put both of them through the holes and sit down and draw your handle outline and your contours of it and trim the outside off and then, um, work on your thinness keep in mind your rivets right now are proud so that means they're sticking up above the surface um, when we get it to where we like it what we're going to do is we're going to drill a little bit bigger hole right here on the top not go very deep with it just so that rivet will sit down and, and be flush or just under flush and we'll sand it to flush 